Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Local Chat. It is episode 54. We are here for another not normal one because we're going to be talking all things 2022. I'm your host, Will Crosby. Joining me, as always, Ian Gibson. Oh, it feels so good to be back, folks. I can't wait to talk about all the games I've been playing and all the hottest news items. Also joining us for two weeks in a row after our stunning Whoa. Game of the Year announcement, Jake Terrio. The magical time. It's a magical, magical Whoa. time. I feel like I'm going to sneeze. It's like so close. Oh, no, it's not going to happen. Uh, Just finish. Oh, it's right there. It's the worst. Uh, folks, we're, as you may have heard, we're going to do a little year in preview this week, uh, which is going to be us talking about 2022. Ian, so kindly, like a kindly old man, um, went ahead and pasted a Wikipedia article. Was that what it was? Oh no, that was the game like of the how year. You started out being so nice, and then uh, you just said, "Pasted a Wikipedia." No, 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 no! Like I was gonna two seconds. No, I was continuing. I was thinking of the wrong thing. Anyways, he made an entire list of all the things that are coming out this year, and then we all highlighted stuff we thought was important to talk about, and we have now shrunk it down. Um, I was giving you enough credit, you son of a. Wow. Um, anyway, we anyways. are. Uh, but before we do that, there's a very special thing we need to do, which is open my Elite Four prize that was sent from China. Um, so just to be clear, Will has just finished beating Pokemon Fire Red as part of season one of Poke Will. Um, I was so proud of him for taking on the challenge of playing a game that he has historically hated and doing a 180 you know he didn't have to do a 180 but he went into it very genuine very open and honest and turns out he actually loves pokemon so much that he beat the elite four and so i had a prize ready for him to open as soon as he beat the elite four but it turns out he beat them too quickly and the prize came what two days later <laughs> i think it was yeah something like that so uh let's go ahead let's go ahead and open it up this is your, open it? Uh, this is prize. it i got tear oh, yeah. at the top Oh yeah! Oh, this seems so cool. <gasps> what is it? It looks so cool. <gasps> oh, got it's, a got a little, it's got a little Pokemon emblem on them, and the little Pikachu on the other side, and it's it's red <gasps> and white, just like a Pokemon envelope. I'm pretty sure I know what this is, and I might ear up because I think Go I know ahead. what this is. Go ahead. Oh, is it what I think it is? What is it? <gasps> it's the League Badges! That's right. That's really great. From the Kanto oh, region. Oh, that's All so good. All eight gym badges as pins. I, I, once I saw that, I was like, I kind of have to. Because the whole thing was about tracking how many badges you have. And every time you get a badge, it's a little celebration. Uh, I was trying to find one for the Elite Four, but there's not really canonical Elite Four badges but that's good enough. I'm so happy. Where's the guard? Glad you like it. No. I'm very Congrats. happy. Thank you. I was thinking of getting a pin board uh, because I have those Mario anniversary pins and I think they're way too cool to just have in a box. So I that's mean, you awesome. can just do foam core wrapped in fabric and then yeah. pin board. Yeah, you can just throw up on the ground. Literally just the fabric. If you, <gasps> like, you get it on like a dowel and then you yeah. hang it. Did you make that in school? No, my wife made this. Oh. Oh. In the makerspace <laughs> at the museum she worked at. Have you it's thought about... Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's too mean. Uh, no, it looks great. <laughs> looks great. <laughs> no, it's it's obviously cheap. <laughs> I'm just That's kidding. That's the point. It does look fine. Oh, this bit gone too far. <laughs> dug himself a real bad <laughs> hole just, right there. Mm, really I'm just bitch. joking, Jake. Jeez. Oh, uh, it looks fine. I was just trying to be oh a jerk, boy. and it backfired on me. Um, oh, it fired. It landed. It fired. Are you drinking, Ian Gibson, or is that just iced tea, buddy? It's Thursday, it and it's been a long week. Arnold so yes, Palmer. I am I, drinking. Now that you're in Florida, <laughs> I decided I drank enough on that finale Pokemon stream to not drink on stream for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it was oh, very boy. good. Um, but Dratini is just a smooth Gyarados and could fit in someone's butt. 
Um, so we're gonna yeah. start here um, with the games. <laughs> I, <didn't... laughs> I gotta, I gotta add a disclaimer to this. All right, so this list comes from Wikipedia. I think I made it a week and a half ago, so there may be some stuff that recently got announced to put on here. Um, a lot of these, this is any game announced for 2022. So that means anything with a definitive date, anything for a month, such as March 2022, or anything for a quarter or even for the entire year. So we can't necessarily explicitly go in order, but we can try to. Um, and I've tried to call out on here on the left column um, when it was actually announced for. Um, so just something to keep in mind as we go through any of these could be pushed. There's probably, st there's always going to be stuff that hasn't been announced yet. That's going to be like, Whoa, my God, they're remaking last of us again for the PS five. In which case it's not on here. Cause we don't give a shit, but also because it's not been announced yet. So take this with a grain of salt, but yeah, I, I figure we just go through here and we kind of just talk through each of them and maybe call out ones we're very excited for we'll call out ones we're hesitant. Let's just, let's see what the year has in stock for us. Awesome. So I'll uh, I'll kind of start us off here with the twentieth of January. Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Extraction. Look, I Clancy. I I've tried to play Rainbow Six before, and I think the problem I have with it it is one of those games that is very it has a, it has a learning curve because it's also very intense and it's also very dependent on map knowledge. And it takes a while to learn those things. I feel like, Will, you have a lot more experience with Rainbow Six than I do. Uh, specifically Siege? Yes. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I played Siege pretty early on before the madness happened and it became G.I. Joe. Um, and it was super enjoyable. I, I preferred doing uh, like terrorist, I think it's terrorist hunt missions. Yeah, that's like the PVE stuff. Yeah, yeah, PVE stuff was a lot more fun. And then when we did do online matches, uh, it was just like casual. And um, I, I feel like having the set number of characters was more fun because you knew what was like kind of predictable, but there was still enough that you could like, you might not have the right defense against this. But now it's just like people, there's so many, and there's so many you might not own that starting <laughs> fresh with that. It's kind of annoying, which... Which honestly is why I'm looking forward to Rainbow Six Extraction. It's more focused on PvE. It'll be on Game Pass at launch, which is practically free. Yes, that's huge. That's and huge. and the starting point of these types of games is usually a pretty good place to get into as far as um, the learning curve because everyone else is learning at the same time. Yeah. Great. Awesome. I'm excited for that one. Um, One down. One down. Ian, you want to go next? Yeah, let's talk about Windjammers 2. Um, I'm surprised this hasn't actually come out yet, but Windjammers is a crazy uh, Neo Geo game that kind of um, had a cult following. It kind of uh, had another resurgence after Giant Bomb found it. Uh, I want to say, man, that was probably five, six, seven years ago. Um, it's it's kind of like a it's kind of like Pong, but you're catching the disc and you're bouncing it off the walls and you're doing some jumps and some crazy moves. So anyways, dot email bought the rights to it and they're coming out with a sequel. This this could be really cool. This could be a really cool like Rocket League type arcade sports game. Um, I'm just a little concerned that it has an uphill fight because it is kind of a simplistic cult joke inside joke when Jammers is. So yeah, it's true. It'd be cool to see when Jammers 2 finally out, but I'm not sure if it's actually going to take off because the other thing was didn't when Jammers when Jammers had a remaster, didn't it? That I came don't know. out. I th and it just didn't really hit. I think so. Now yeah, that you're so saying that. It'll be curious to see how this is. I, I think I don't think this is a Game Pass game, but this should be a Game Pass game. This really should be. This is the perfect type of thing where if it's going to hit, it needs to be in as many hands, pe many people's hands as possible for free to become a huge success. Yeah, totally. Uh, Jake, you want to hit this next one? I know you love it. Pokemon Legends Arceus. Um, is it, is it, I don't is, know is if that, that's how it's pronounced or not. Is it Arceus? I, I don't I'm know how to pronounce sure it. I'm pretty sure it's Arceus. I think that's right. Okay. Um, this... I... Hmm? Oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I'm... I'm, ex I, I'm like tenu uh, tentatively excited for this because it is... Yeah. It seems like for a while now, Game Freak has been kind of like just kind of 
twisting the Pokemon formula to try to see if they can get something fresh out of it. And this seems to really be kind of going real hard on that. Um, being an open world ish Pokemon game. Um, so uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm definitely going to play it to just to kind of see, you know, how the, how the Pokemon formula translates to that kind of a game. Yeah. Um, <laughs> cause I'm assuming, I don't know. May, I may, I haven't really seen much press for it apart from the, initial announcement i don't know if this the stuff that i'm about to talk about has been talked about at all but i don't know if it's gonna do like the open world thing like are you gonna be able to get like side quests or is it still gonna be essentially like a mainline pokemon game you go from town to town and you know catch pokemon and defeat the gym leader <clears throat> is it gonna be like that but just your 3d setting um because I feel like there's a lot that they could they could do with yeah. opening opening up the game like that, but I don't know if they are going to do that or not. From like, so there was a 13 minute uh, like gameplay overview overview that came out today. And there was uh, one last week or early in the week that was in Japanese that people watched. So a lot of it is like, um, and I didn't finish the whole video, but it's mostly open world. Um, you are more. Uh, like more of the thre thread of the plot line is you filling out the Pokedex. So you're going back to this town that in the video they presented as your like hub town. So you come back here to like get your new fashion items, get your upgrades, cook food, uh, blah, 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 blah. And then you turn in your, uh, I can't remember what they call them, scouts or something like that. You turn in your scouting missions, update your, update the Pokedex. Uh, and then you get more scouting missions and you go out and it was like showing them like creeping up on Pokemon, throwing the Pokeball, Pokeball catches it, wiggles, and then like shoots up a flare when it catches, <laughs> which was pretty neat. Uh, and then towards the end w w where I was watching, it was showing like, there's this one Pokemon you can ride around like a horse. And then the next Pokemon. Oh, I have seen gifts of people, right? Yeah. Pokemon. You're, you're hanging from like a wind glider gliding with the with this pokemon and then another pokemon you're you're going through the water with so i think it's going to be it to me it, it seemed like blending breath of the wild and monster hunter where mm -hmm. there's distinct regions where you're going to do your scouts but i mm -hmm. i think i don't think it's like monster hunter where you load into a region i think you can just go there just through the open there. world um yeah is there well, I was, if, just because I haven't seen anything except that initial, is there turn-based combat or is it? I it I did not see a combat portion. Seeking and catching. Um, there were there was stuff that looked like boss fights. Um, but hmm. I I saw that you're like obviously you're playing the trainer, so I don't know yeah. how those fights work at all. Um, I don't even I don't even know if it's in that video. It must be. Um, that's definitely something to check out. But. So far, other, like, barring someone being, like, if this gets middling or less reviews, I probably won't get it, but, like, average and above, I, it has done enough for me to make me be like, hey, I'll play this game, I'll give it the 60 bucks and play it for a while. Uh, it's my an one... interesting curiosity. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, I, will, I won't, I won't hurt Pokemon for taking a risk when it seems like their mm -hmm. past couple games have not been risky at all and yeah. have been too comfortable. Um, so yeah, I, I'm excited for that uh, as a, as a new Pokemon fan. Um, yeah, it looks it's a big exciting. gamble. It's a big change. I, I want it to pay off, but it's, it's, there's definitely a lot of hesitation as to whether it actually will or not. Mm -hmm. Totally. Um, I can take this next game. Go for January it. 28th. Uncharted Legacy of Thieves collection for the PlayStation 5, which I'm pretty sure is just a bunch of Uncharted games for the PS5. Two. Um, who, who cares? Because they already did this for the PS4. You can play it on the PS5. I, I Look, I just want to touch on real quick. There have been rumors lately that they are remaking Last of Us for PS5, which is crazy because they already had like a really nice looking remaster of it for the PS4 that you can play on the PS5. I, I, I Look, I, I've always appreciated Sony because... 
they've leaned heavily in their exclusives. But this feels like they're heavily they're leaning into more like we're just going to remake and remaster a lot of our exclusives. And that that that's a little worrisome. Uh, what do you guys think? I think Last of Us might end up being their Skyrim. Where yeah, like true. every every or their GTA 5 where every every console generation they're like let's put Last of Us on there. Yeah. Um first of all I'll say Uncharted Legacy of Thieves is only Uncharted 4 and Lost Legacy. Uh, and it's coming to it's PC one, two, as well. Um, no, because 1, 2, and 3 were remastered for PS4, I want to say pretty late in the cycle. Mm. Unless it was really Will early. Will you get it? Oh. If you pre-order, do you get a free ticket to the upcoming Thomas Holland film? Actually, I'm pretty sure you actually might. <laughs> With Mark Now Mark. that you're saying that. Um, um, I'm I'm sorry, but that is not the release date for PC. Oh, it's not PC the release date. PC is later. Oh, PC okay. is later. PC but. version is in development. Will release shortly after the PS5 version. But there is it is the era of COVID and random delays, so there is <laughs> yeah, no that guarantee that will come out on PC. But I, that's crazy. So you're gonna make me buy a PS5 version of Uncharted Four and Lost Legacy, and that's it. And you're just going to say, look, it's, uh, it's a PS4 game, but we made it look better on the PS5. So it's a brand new $60, $70 version. That's even more bullshit. Yeah, I guess. I, I mean, I would totally do this. I think Uncharted 4 is an amazing looking game. And to see if they improve that on the PS5 would be incredible. Uh, and then as far as the Last of Us thing, I'm totally down with that. Um, Last of Us was one of the first remaster. Like, because Last of Us 1 came out right before the PS3, PS4 came out, not right before, yeah. but like a year before. So they just remastered the PS4. Um, I would love to see uh, that that game in the second game's engine. I was just doing a bunch of stuff for work with The Last of Us Part Two, and there were some of those cutscenes, uh, like watching in Premiere, where you're just like, is that real? Is that like actually like a physical location, or is that part of the game? Like yeah. some of that stuff is, I mean, there's, there's variances of that. There's parts in that game that look I, terrible. I just, but. I just, I think about, when you think about Xbox's strategy, which is basically like, yeah, throw, throw your previous game in there. It will run. And for a lot of these games, we are already going to natively up res them and up the frame rate by default, period. Yeah. And Sony's saying, look, we're going to charge you a lot for it. Yeah. We're probably going to remaster it. We're probably going to up some of these textures, et cetera. Maybe some of the mechanics, but we're going to charge you full price for it. And like, I'm not saying it should be free for the amount of work they're probably going to put into it, but it just does not feel like it should be that much, especially just for two games, considering we just had the Mass Effect Legendary Edition, which was 60 bucks for three full blown remasters. Yeah, like if if it's a remaster in the sense of a uh, Demon Souls, then like, I think that's worth paying for. But if it's the remaster in the sense of this is running faster, this has higher res textures through an algorithm like Xbox route is better. But if they remastered an Xbox game, I think outside of the core Xbox games and like did a full remake or something like that, like obviously they would charge money. Yeah. It wouldn't just be like, but oh, I, but it runs I, better. But I think the other part is need like, like Demon's Souls needed a remake because it was only on the PlayStation three and it was, it was, it was long in the tooth. It was very long in the tooth. You do not need to remake a game that came out on the PS3 that had a remastered version on the PS4 yeah. that is playable on the PS5. Like you just you don't need to do that, and if you do, it needs to be dirt cheap. I mean, granted, this hasn't been announced yet, but it's still just like I don't know. Their strategy is kind of weird. It's like they see what Xbox is doing and they're trying to get to that, but they've decided that they're going to do it through unnecessary remasters of tentpole releases and charge you money for it, and it's, it just seems a little wonky. Yeah, you need someone to remake Tempest. Yeah, yeah. We make Tempest. Do it. Get on it. Uh, the guy who makes. Let me play it vertical on the Switch. What's his name? Jeff Mentor. <laughs> he plays. He makes all the the Tempest stuff now. Um, Dying Light Two. Stay Human. Uh, February fourth. I like Dying Light One a lot. I played it a bunch with uh, my brother and my friend, uh, and we made through it. But yeah, we made it through the whole game, and we were playing the DLC um That's that cool. game feels really good. Uh, it looks like more Dying Light. It had a very troubled development cycle. I will play more Dying Light. Uh, Five hundred hours of content. Please. Yeah, <laughs> five hundred hours of content. That 
They then uh, released a statement directed at the company I work for, clarifying what they said, which honestly, nobody thought your game was actually 500 hours. Like, it was, they were saying that for a tester, for a person to find every little thing would be about 500 yeah. hours, which is. Yeah, I, I was, yeah, I saw someone <laughs> hypothesizing that they were sure that had happened because some marketing person asked the dev. How much, like, what, how much, how's all, what's all the game there? And they're like, oh, it's about 500 hours of stuff. And they're like, all right, we'll, we'll run with that. Yeah. What's a, yeah. what's a Skyrim? Uh, yeah, that's, I mean, okay. You guys play either, you play the first Dying Light? Either of you? No, I, I, I heard a lot of fantastic things about it. I heard it's like a better version of Dead Island, and I kind of enjoyed Dead um, Island. So, I'm zombie out. If Dying Light 2 gets really good reviews, and if it supports, like, co op from the get go, uh, I'm tempted. Oh. It I'm better to hop in. It's uh, honestly, Ian. It might be too spooky for you. Um, okay, I'm probably not gonna play that, it then, folks. That uh, and not in any sort of horror game sense. But that first game, you're like, don't go out at night. Those zomb the zombies are crazy at night. And you're like, okay, run it. I can tell you, running back to your base as the sun is setting with two other people in co-op with you being chased by like a loud growing sound of zombies like waking up is Jeez. absolutely terrifying um so i'm That's... very much looking forward to that not like minecraft where they just kind of pop in yeah yeah just like pop, 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 pop. um man minecraft uh next one up sifu is uh from the people who made that game that ian and i first reviewed together uh absolver absolver uh oh, slow clap yes I genuinely liked Absolver. Um, was I right? I just said yes to... Yeah, I was right. Yeah, it's on the list. It's uh, I know, I have to scroll over because oh, I, I made it small. Looking. Sorry. Um, I think this game looks cool. Uh, I liked Absolver, but what Absolver needed was a storyline and a reason to be doing all the things you were doing other than just yeah, fighting like a people. Better, a better environment other than... It was literally just like gray black brown yeah. worn down environment like you looked all the same and it was very uninteresting whereas this this is the one where um it's kind of like a, a asian martial style martial arts style and apparently every time you die in the game you come back to life but you're a year older so as you're playing through the game and you're dying you're you're getting older man that's so um, cool it, it basically looks like the hallway fight from from old boy uh it's it just looks fantastic is it are they doing the same thing with like like fighting stances was that absolver i might be confusing it was that, that was absolver yeah. i'm not sure if they're doing exactly that but they are definitely leaning heavily into like we have made our own martial arts system yeah man i don't know how i beat absolver because i'm terrible at fighting games, i don't know how i beat it I either i'm it was like yeah it was weird it's tough i like took that so seriously cause it was like our first video thing um yeah i don't know why that go? <laughs> yeah <laughs> making millions um I don't know anything about Crossfire X. I put on this list because this is very weird. Crossfire X, I believe it already came out as a multiplayer, as a free-to-play multiplayer game. And it looks like a free-to-play multiplayer shooter, a first-person Call of Duty type shooter. However, there is a single-player campaign that is being released on February 10th made with Remedy. Yes, that remedy where apparently I, I don't know if they just did the story or if they actually got hands on with with the game and the code and the engine it's and the assets but it's just bonkers to think about it feels like this is such a throwaway game but remedy's out there making the story and that alone makes me interested in it yeah um, I, I don't think the campaign i is had not heard that i think it's a reduced price so i'm very curious to see if this is actually awesome or not i'm a, um, I'm a writer the, the key art looks yeah. like the most boring thing in the world yeah yeah but but at the same time it, the gameplay didn't look god awful it just looked like oh it's just another generic shooter i bet it feels okay but yeah. then you throw remedy on it and you're like okay maybe i know i'm shot. watching yeah, i'm watching the game awards trailer now and the remedy logo is coming up and i'm like huh, okay is the cry yeah, is crossfire x weird. multiplayer the one that's super popular in china uh i mean maybe or am i think also call of duty mobile that's super yeah, popular that's right. there's something mobile i'm thinking about that has like is a steam similar allowed name. in china again probably not um it i believe it i don't think it was steam that was explicitly banned it was like the generic steam platform and mm. you have to go through a, like i think you have to go through steam tencent now like mm. there's some partnership they have uh, to, to officially sell 
Um, Anyways, um, next up, I also put this on the list. Uh, February 17th, Total War Warhammer 3. Have any of you guys played the Total War Warhammer games? No, I have seen gameplay. Uh, I I yeah. know about the Total Hammer, the to- <laughs> Total Hammer War War. It should be uh, Total War Hammer, but Total apparently War not. Um, um, it, that's Creative Assembly. It is. It's, with, they basically took the their... 40K property. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And they're on their third one. And apparently they have all been really, really good. Um, I'm not going to dive into this one. A real time strategy game. That's exactly. Their whole thing. And I really like the Total War series. I, I'm not going to dive into this one because it's a brand new release, but I actually just got Total War Warhammer, the first one for free from Amazon Gaming Prime. And so I'm, I'm excited to try that out. I just wanted to call this out. This is one of those series that I feel like I should probably give it a try. And it's good to see they're getting a third one and they're getting a lot of popularity mm. off of it. Is it fantasy Warhammer or 40k? It's fantasy. It's the fantasy Warhammer. Okay. They they have made yeah. there is there is a 40k. There's like a space. Um, there's at least one where you're you have it's real time with like fleet battles. Oh, are you thinking? I, but not that's not it's not total war. That's not total war. You're thinking of like oh, Armada, Battlefleet Gothic. Goth- yeah, Battlefleet yes, Gothic. Armada. Sorry, that's what I'm yeah. thinking of. Um, Horizon Forbidden West. Forbidden guys, is this game? Look, the last play. game, I'll be honest with you, was like a solid seven. And then uh, Breath of the Wild came out, I think, a week later and just destroyed it. I kind of want to play this, but only because there's just not really that many other games coming out around the same time. What do you guys think? I what? very much enjoyed Horizon Zero Dawn uh, narratively. I mean, I enjoyed it gameplay wise as well, um, but yeah. I was definitely by about like the third or fourth hour. I was in it for the story um yeah like okay, i gotta see how this ends um so i'm interested in forbidden west for the same reason um but i also i i i have just i it's it's a, a lot of venn diagrams of things jake likes mm-hmm. coming together to be like here's yeah. horizon zero dawn um so yeah i'm definitely gonna definitely gonna play it i just want to talk about how the main character isn't hot enough and that we should boycott the game because they're not hot listen gosh i hate those people so much i will not play any video game character that i don't want to sleep with (laughs) it's not allowed i always pick waluigi for a reason (laughs) dang you beat me to the punch i just i i don't know i mean i don't know i definitely didn't like aloy's not like a i don't know okay whatever she's like a solid seven (laughs) Just, just like, like the, the game, game she's in. <laughs> just like the game. No, I I was just I I think about that every time I see um Horizon Zero Dawn key art is that key art of Aloy is those yeah. people being and like can you imagine is, her smiling? Is that and I imagine the the guy who like <laughs> who sexied her up and like and yes. like seriously imagine... presented it like, oh, this is what your character should look like. One day I'm scrolling yeah. Twitter and I see a picture of this character from this game and I immediately open up Photoshop because I have to fix it. I can make her look better. Uh, Will, did you ever do you ever finish Horizon Forbidden Dawn or <laughs> Zero Dawn? Zero Dawn? No, I was playing it a bunch and then I was going to and then they announced that the uh, like improved version was coming out. Like they were going to up it for PS5 and then uh, time got away from me because <laughs> yeah. i just remember when you were when you were playing it Feels save a bunch too. of save data was also playing it at the same time so yeah. it was this weird thing where everybody was playing it and there were a lot of people at save data that were just like this game is amazing how did i miss it and i feel like it was like maybe chris and you and me we were just like this game's like okay, okay. i guess it was this weird like two three week thing between the two different sites where everybody was talking about horizon zero dawn and then, yeah, because they were doing their like spoiler cast event and they didn't invite mm. me, but they were like, oh, you should play it so you could join in. And I'm like, I don't know if I want to do that. I don't think I, I wanna, want to like, I'll there. join in, but I don't want to finish this game. Um, yeah, you put me on there. I'm going to be a little bit of an Ian and I'm just going to yeah. shit on that game the whole time. <laughs> I will say the one thing that did keep me going was that story stuff, because that stuff was yeah, really story good. Was great. Narrative was great. Um, yeah. So I think I, I'm definitely I'm going to do a recap thing before. Uh, the 18th if i do get it or perhaps don't have to pay for it 
Um, Jake, this next one is for you. It's your time to El- shine, Elden- buddy. <laughs> Elden Ring on February 25th. Oh, wait, sorry, I'm skipped. <laughs> I sorry. can't believe you just we skipped that. it. It doesn't matter. Let's <laughs> keep February going. 22nd is Destiny 2 The Witch Queen. Ugh. Oh, boy. I I keep Debra thinking about... Deborah Wilson as Savathun, the Some... Hive Queen of Cunning. <laughs> Something I'm going to keep... pay for and then never play. <laughs> I keep thinking about hopping back into Destiny 2, but I keep remembering that every time I hop back into it, they've changed it so much and yet somehow made it worse. <laughs> well, so now... <laughs> And then every every month, somebody's like, I try to hop into Destiny 2 again, and I still don't know what to do because it's even more confusing now. So Wait, it's like... have you heard Have you heard the, the issue with new players that's happening right now, which is actually pretty hilarious? No, I, I don't oh. think I okay. have. So for the 30th anniversary, they released this new game, game mode called Dares of Eternity. Um, and a thing Bungie does with every new release... Like when you buy a Witch Queen, the first thing that's going to happen is they're going to launch you into the opening mission of the Witch Queen when you boot up the game. And so yeah. when you launched into, if you had never played Destiny before and you bought the the game after the 30th anniversary, it would not boot you into the first mission. It would boot you into Dares of Eternity, which it has a much higher power level. Oh no. So people were getting like new light players were getting trapped in this game <laughs> oh, mode my God. because you wouldn't like you could go to orbit if you knew that that was something you could do. Yeah. Um so there was this whole thing of of veteran players deliberately putting on worse armor to lower their power level so that they could load into instances of wow. this game mode with the new oh, player. Oh my God. That's pretty um and Bungie is working on a patch for it, but it's, it's pretty it, hilarious. Like there is so much good content in Destiny 2 and so many good mechanics and the shooting feels so good and so much lore, but they throw up so many roadblocks to you experiencing that and like continuously enjoying and experiencing that. And it's so frustrating. The fact but- that these newbies don't have to walk their terribly slow half dead guardian like 50 yards in that every a long beginning character through the crumbling thing. bits of the last city i had to do it with three separate characters when that game launched <laughs> and it was the worst and now newbies just don't have to do it and they don't deserve it but they <laughs> supposedly like all the the press and stuff leading up to the witch queen um because it was supposed to you know every every big release has been um in september but this one obviously got pushed pretty far back because of COVID um, from September to February. Um, but and they've been saying that the campaign for the Witch Queen is going to be the definitive Destiny campaign. Um, I don't know what that means, if it's basically going to become the de facto <laughs> campaign for new players as well. Because um, there is, like, where do you even drop a new player just... in a game like this? Jake, I hear you. I hear you. But fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, shame on you. Fool me three, four, five, six, seven times. You must be Bungie because you keep promising <laughs> shit and it gets worse with every update. You know, it's just yeah, like gunplay is so it's good. so good. I it know is so that's good. the problem. So it's good. so good. And there's I really and- I, I know I crap on this game a lot, but I really do want them to fix things and make them easier because I would love to hop into this game two, three times a week f- ad infinitum for years and years and years and just have lots of fun with it. I really want to do that. But it's just it's not it's not conducive to that unless you just like fully dedicate yourself to learning all their arcane and obtuse systems, you know? Yeah, if you, if you hadn't because I, I didn't I didn't play Destiny when it launched in. 2014 14 i played yeah. it um near the end of destiny one's life cycle i i picked it up with the rise of iron um, when i picked it up the campaign um and even that there was stuff that had already been changed so far from you know 1.0 <laughs> um but yeah i do i do understand that i benefit from several years of being in the destiny ecosystem at this point um i can't fathom being a new player hopping into yeah. it in the state that it's in right now it's wild but i'm very excited for the campaign the new all the new uh air, the new environments look really cool they're adding a uh a, a, a staff weapon 
essentially what? that also has some sort of ranged function. Jake, you're um, going to make me buy it. Stop talking. I'm going to buy it, and then I'm going to play it 15 minutes of and, it. And, William, there will now be weapon crafting. Ugh. Ugh. That's my least Which favorite I'm part of Destiny. About. Wait, my wait least favorite part wait of Destiny. No, shut up. Shut your face. They already <laughs> had that. They have, like, the mods, and then you do things no, 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 to no, no. it to re-roll it. That's basically weapon crafting. Mm, there's this changes. Isn't a Destiny changes are podcast. coming to the mod system. <laughs> Uh, but you can craft weapons out of stuff. Because <sighs> I think <sighs> what the one of the problems is. Sorry, this will be the last thing I say before we move on to Elden Ring. <laughs> um, there's such a huge loot pool that they've been trying to come up with ways for people to be like, I just want a good roll on this one weapon, and so they're trying to give yeah. players ways to just seek out that weapon. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. And so that they're introducing a crafting system where you'll get, you know, parts of guns and then you can take them somewhere and be like, okay, I want that shotgun. Uh, See, my least, my problem with Destiny, my least favorite thing about Destiny is like making a build for a certain thing. I just hate doing that. I just want to wear armor and shoot things. So I just have a uh, one size fits all. Yeah. Content. I don't care if I'm not optimized for certain activities. Um, I'm from playing for fun. One great shooter to a terrible one. Elden Ring comes out on the 25th <laughs> of February. A game with no shooting except for arrows. Um, I'm excited for Elden Ring. I like all the Souls games. I never played Sekiro. Bloodborne's good. George R. R. Martin books are pretty good too. So why not shove them in a blender and vomit them into a brand new open world? Yeah, they're Soul's taking Born some game. big swings with this. It's nice to see them mix things up. Not that they've been failing before, but they were kind of getting a little long in the tooth with the Soulsborne format. And I'm always happy when a studio isn't comfortable. I'm sorry, when a studio is very comfortable with what they've been making and decides to just try something brand new or at least pretty different from what they've been doing before. Um, and if it so wasn't yeah. going to be Metal Wolf Chaos 2, it can That's be right. this. Armored Core 6. Mm -hmm. um, Ian, uh, do you like FMV in your racing games? Guys, that's why this is on here. Look, I don't know if this is going to be any good. I actually, uh, Grid, we're talking about Grid Legends, February 25th, 2022. There's two reasons this is on this list. Number one, I actually played the Grid games recent. The Grid game recently, it's on Game Pass. It's actually like a solid arcade racing game. It's it has enough to it that you feel good about the racing. The racing actually feels a lot better than eighty four. So Game Force Horizon or Force of Motorsport. Really, but it's also arcadey enough. Game that of it's the super year. Forza no. Horizon oh Five. Oh my God, IGN, what are you doing? Um, but Grid Legends is on here because they showed a trailer for it. This is a racing game that has FMV and it's as, as a Formula One fan, the way that they're doing it is actually really enticing, which is basically you are part of the grid motorsport series. And so let's say there's like 12 drivers that are part of this championship series. So every week they go to a different track and, you know, they hang out on the pit crew and they they race. But all 12 of them are part of the FMV. And so the FMV is like this weird, like race car soap opera where they're like pushing each other and being like, Hey man, that was my podium. And the other guy's like, why are you drunk in the pit? Why are you drunk in the pit stop, man? And he's just like, you were in my way. And so I am so excited for a racing game that feels good, but at the same time has like really cheesy FMV acting between the races. Like I, I really want this to be as weird as I want it to be because I would love to play it. Who knows? Grid Legends. They're trying to trick racing fans into liking visual novels. And this We've is their slow... Before. Need for Speed Carbon. Need for Speed, the reboot that was just Need for Speed. That had FMV, yeah. wasn't it? Yes, yes. Um, but this, honestly, the way that they're doing this, where it's not like street racers, it's literally just like professional race car drivers at a track pushing each other <laughs> because they're upset is like it's so good as as formula one and will can attest to this the blast formula one season ended so crazy and there have literally been in previous years people like pushing each other and trying to punch each other at the track and nascar does that i feel like every nascar race ends in drivers trying to punch each other in the pit lane so for them to like have that fmv like wrestling type drama 
in the game this is this is another big swing and i'm i'm all i'm all for it let's see if it's any good who knows dang that sounds pretty good i will watch you stream that when it comes out on the 25th actually i won't because it'll be the same day as elden ring so no um next up <laughs> evil dead the game this is what looks to be i believe a dead by daylight style game with uh four people trying to escape is it? I thought, I thought it was, this like, was like the story based movie. I'll, I'll look it up real quick. That was like asynchronous multiplayer. Oh, is it Bruce is. Campbell in it? It's cooperative so? gameplay and player versus player combat. So I believe you're right. It is. It is kind of Dead by Daylight. Wasn't there Evil Dead stuff in Dead by Daylight or in? The... Um, no, Evil Dead was so. in something else. Man. Evil Dead would be a good fit for like back for blood bruce campbell was in uh bruce campbell in that mortal Kombat. yes that yes sounds i think right. that's what you're thinking anyways this looks pretty cool because it shows like the hunter player as like the smoke thing and then turning into like a knight or whatever because there were from like uh army of darkness i think so i think it could be interesting um i don't know uh boss team games is uh track record but um yeah, it looks like fun. That's for the Do you think 20... Boston Games is, is from Boston? That would be cool. I thought you were going to make that a Boss Key cool. reference. Um, Isn't there a studio called Beantown Games? Well, Beantown is Boston. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Anyways, uh, Will, why don't you talk about this <laughs> stupid game you've got on the list next? This is not a stupid game. This is I Piranha. watched you play it. I know you did. Elix is a good video game, and we were wrong back then. Uh, <laughs> Piranha Bytes makes a very certain type of game, uh, and the mainstream moguls don't want you to know about it because they're the lying video game to elites. you. The video game elites. Uh, the man in Washington uh yeah anyways elix is fun it's like this future society got cast back into whatever there's magic now there's cool trees there's super cyber people and then there's people who want nothing to do with it elix 2 is coming out i believe it is continuing the story of you the person who is the titular character not elix i don't remember elix i think is the magic uh i was about to say titular means i know i know what it means <laughs> Uh, it's not titillating. Elix? Um, anyways, I'm looking forward to this. I like, I got into Elix last year again, <clears throat> and it has that piranha bite. I'm getting very emotional. It has that piranha bites uh, jank that is just like <laughs> really good, and you can just kind of do dumb crap. But they're also extremely hard video game. So yeah, I don't know. I do I'm remember that. To it. Yeah, that's March 1st. On March 4th, though, Ian goes around the track once again. Oh, baby daddy, it is time for Gran Turismo 7. Um, I'll just kind of line up why I'm excited for this. Number one, it's PlayStation 5. It's also backwards compatible for the PS4, but um, Gran Turismo and Polyphony Digital has, since the PlayStation 1, since the original Gran Turismo, always done a fantastic job of showcasing the latest in console tech. Um, but the other thing is, I, I don't know if you guys were aware of this, but Gran, the last Gran Turismo game was Gran Turismo Sport, and it was a bit of a controversial release because it when it was launched, it was heavily focused on multiplayer so it didn't contain a single player campaign they kind of added that back in, back in over time but something that the gran turismo series has always done really well is they have like this whole license system where you have to take these tests and pass them to earn your license and then with the license you can then do uh higher tier racing so like at the start you're like oh well you only have this license so you can only race volkswagen beetles etc and um both through winning races and doing the license system but like i just want to say gran turismo is fantastic because the license tests are they start out very simple it's literally like hey you need to uh accelerate and brake and when you're done breaking, you need to land in this box and total, it needs to take you less than 10 seconds. But then later on, they're doing things like, hey, get from this point to this point in 20 seconds and there's S curves. And here's the best way to navigate those S curves. So it's literally like teaching you how to drive, like the best way to drive. And some of the things that I have learned in Gran Turismo, I have taken to 
uh, I racing, which is a much more serious sim and used in like 24 hour endurance racing. Like they, they literally through this license system, teach you the fundamentals of driving, not just driving in Gran Turismo, not just video game driving, but like how to go fast and efficient through a racetrack. And, and it's fantastic. So I'm excited for Gran Turismo seven because they are, they're bringing that back. This is supposed to be the complete full feature game. It has the online, it has the license system. It has a single player campaign. It has the whole, here's a, here's a, you know, these, these different uh, dealerships you can go to, to buy some cars or buy a used car and, and modify them and add and tune them up. So this is, this is like a big deal. This is a big tentpole Gran Turismo release, which they didn't really have with PlayStation 4 because it was Gran Turismo Sport. So this is, um, this looks fantastic. If you're a racing fan, this is one of the best racing series out there. Much better than Forza. IGN, I can't wait to see you give Gran Turismo 7 your 2022 game of the year. Um, it's going to be great. I'm excited for it. Did they bring Clint Eastwood back to direct? Uh, yes. But, well, they did, but he said that there would only be one car allowed in the game. So they kind of split for creative differences. Oh, that's a stupid joke. I'm not going <laughs> to let you say the punchline. Um, I don't need to. I hate, I hate you so much. <laughs> oh, Grand, boy. Grand Torino. Um, anyways, uh, on the fourth, <laughs> same day. Um, anyone know anything about Triangle Strategy? Yeah, it's the it's like the, the Bravely Default. No, I know. Well, I don't no, care uh, about it. Uh, it's it could be good. Squeenix First of can't all, help announcing games as Project Something Something and then just dropping the project, <laughs> the project and releasing yeah. the game Something Something. I can't wait for Project Shit My Pants in a Octopath. couple of years. <laughs> Octopath Traveler. Yeah, this game looks like Octopath I know Traveler. what it is. I wanted someone to talk about it. It's turn-based, grid-based. Um, this could be good. This could be very good. Uh, it could not be, but it's kind of harkening back to uh, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles that... that uh, I'm sorry, Final Fantasy Tactics Advance. Um, this could be good. Who knows? I Honestly, I'm a little worn out of Fire Emblem series, but I, I do really like that genre. So yeah, bring me bring me this. Um, if this gets good reviews, I'll definitely play it. Yeah. Uh, Chocobo Grand Prix race. Looks like a kart <laughs> racer from Final Fantasy. Uh, I don't know if I highlighted racer. this or who did. I think but... I did just because it, it was announced it's bonkers and it actually looks kind of good and uh as somebody who really loves sonic and sega all-stars racing transformed i love a good kart racer i'm not just a mario kart fan if you're a good kart racer man i'll play you and i'll enjoy it crash team racing etc like bring it on if this is great heck yeah let's play it let's play it play 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 um tunic um listen tunic looks good i've been hearing about tunic for about 18 forever years uh and at this point there's been some games that have done very similar things including uh death's door and another game and also that tunic demo from last year just release the game i don't <laughs> really care well it's it's, care. it's 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 uh gonna be um distributed by Finji. Um, which, and I think this is essentially, Tunic is essentially just a solo dev, functionally a solo dev project. Yeah, um, I think it looks really cool. It's taken so long. Um, uh, just come out already. I want it. Yeah. Uh, just let me play it. Finji um, releases good games, though. Yeah, totally. Totally, totally. Uh, Tina, Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. Uh, I only, I think I only highlighted this because I was so against this game because I don't like Borderlands or Borderlands humor or Tiny Tina, but something about the Game Awards trailer like mm -hmm. hit me right, and I was like, man, I do want to play this. And it was kind of them playing up uh, some of the comedy in it and some of the gameplay, and it actually hit pretty well. And I think mostly because I really like Will Arnett. I think he's funny. Um and like he hit pretty well in those bits so uh i might check this out when it comes out um i mean borderlands gameplay was never bad it's kind of like destiny uh it was pretty good gameplay it was just like everything they were adding on to it was getting a little bit more and more not fun or good uh and i and cannot I think, abide by randy pitchford yes that as well um magicians are disgusting and into Need to get that's why we don't <laughs> that's like why him. we don't like him because he's a magician i um 
I I played a couple hours of Battle of ba but what are these titles? Like, Borderlands. Battle Battleborn? <laughs> are you talking about Battleborn or I did play a couple hours of Battleborn. That was terrible. I I have played a couple hours of Borderlands 1 and Borderlands 2 and I kind of enjoyed them, but honestly, the number one reason why I don't play these games is the sense of humor is awful and the marketing and Randy Pitchford is just so off-putting that I'm sure these games are fun to play, except just for all of that. Bad it, taste in my mouth. Yeah, it's like it's like god awful like humor choices and just god awful marketing around it that pushes that does the opposite. Just push me so far away from the game, and I'm sure I would love the mechanics and everything in it. Um, and they do. So I think I, you, you finish. I was just gonna say. I always hold out a little bit of hope every time they announce one of these games that maybe it'll be different and maybe I'll finally be able to stomach it and enjoy it. I don't know about this. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I think Gearbox's strength, I think, has always kind of been in the casting of their games. Um, yeah. Because, uh, yeah, like there were a lot of performances in, in Borderlands 2 and Borderlands the pre-sequel um, that I really enjoyed from like, a delivery perspective yeah but um yeah he pitched for it get yeah, rid of him get rid of him uh we need to start moving faster because it's been a while <laughs> yeah, um so we're gonna go april quick now. we're not gonna discuss things too long advance wars one plus two reboot camp on the 8th of april uh i have this pre-ordered through that buy to get one free still yeah it's coming to me i do not five... like how it looks yeah yeah it's a little it's a little this was a five month delay i I, I actually, I think I'm not going to get this. I think I'm just going to play Advance Wars 1 or 2 originally. Yeah, I, I've been playing it on the Game Boy, and I've thought about maybe just canceling this pre-order and sticking with my buy two games that I already bought. Yeah. Um, they need to remake uh, whatever one was for the DS. I don't know how they would do that, though, with the two screens. but Make them kiss. A little kiss. Uh, this is in this part of the list, but it's not anymore. Stalker 2 got delayed seven months mm -hmm. to uh, December. Mm -hmm. uh, they got to take all the NFTs out. I really like the first Stalker game. I've been playing a little bit of, again, Stalker 2 Roadside is good. Picnic. Roadside Picnic's yeah. good. The movie Stalker's good. The, the Metro games are good. Tarkovsky. Tarkovsky's good. Tchaikovsky's um, good. Just one more thing about this. I Communism. found out recently, this game looks fantastic. And the reason why is it's an Unreal Engine 5 game. And that's that's I don't want to say it's rare, but in Unreal Engine 5 looks fantastic. It runs great on the next gen consoles. So I'm excited to, to really take like a graphical powerhouse game like this for a spin. Totally. Um, Vampire the Masquerade Swan Song. I have not played any of these games. I look, I, I, I don't know what this is. I just looked it up. It is, it is a role playing game in the Vampire the Masquerade universe, but it's not Vampire the Masquerade 2. Like they did this thing where they said, we're going to finally make the second one. And then the second one got delayed. And I think they completely rebooted it. They had some Me Too scandals around it as well. And then they ended up announcing like 12 different spin offs, like a Battle Royale and all this other stuff. And that, that whole universe has just been completely fractured, even though it feels like they never actually came out with any of them. And so I, I, uh, I don't know what this is. Let's, let's move on. This Sons is of the, the Forest. This is something else. Uh, it's the sequel to The Forest. The Forest yeah, being I was gonna say. Yeah. one of the uh, really first big uh, crafting games, survival games to come out. And spooky. It's uh, got spooky. Like horror elements, doesn't it? It's got horror elements of people in the woods watching, watching you. Yell at it. Um, yeah, it was also pretty big on YouTube. I really liked The Forest. I thought the mystery was cool and the storyline. And they were as well as being the first of those, a lot of those other things, they were definitely the first to really integrate a story into a survival game and you kind yeah. of uh, accomplishing that. So I think, uh, keep doing what you're doing. Uh, I like your font choice. Uh, so keep going for spoken besides being the worst, oh. worst title for a video game. A terrible name. Uh, this is, this is the one that I believe, uh, screenwriter Gary Witta has been yeah. helping out with. It's from uh, Square Enix and a lot of the people who have been doing Final Fantasy. It kind of looks like Final Fantasy 15, but more of a fantasy different action of it. it. And I believe this is the one that has a a a mixed race main character. And it was recently revealed that 
the entire writing staff is white. And so there's definitely some controversy around it. And it's just like, it's a very weird game that kind of shows well, but only because people are like, oh, people working on this do really good stuff. But the game's not necessarily showing that well. And so I feel like this is just a, this is a big mystery in the year. This is, it's not quite No Man's Sky mystery, but it's almost like, we're not really sure what this game is and if it's actually going to be any good or not. For so, Spoken to Me is one knows. of those games in like, it's I feel like in like, towards the end of the PS5's life cycle, they'll have sales and it's Wario 64 will be like, hey, you can pick up For Spoken for two ninety nine. It's pretty good for that. Yeah. Um, I can yeah. totally. Uh, Actually, Ian, only because you mentioned it, there's entirely, the, there's a good chance that throughout the next year there will be two to three free No Man's Sky updates. Oh yeah! Dropped at any they're point. Not, they're not on this list for a reason because that game is uh, irredeemable. Saints <laughs> no. Row. I do not care this is the reboot, about right? anything this Saints is the Row. I I really liked playing the original Saints Row because it came out like, on Xbox 360 at this time I, when the third. It it was it was in between GTA games and it was True. just cool enough to be a GTA clone, but also had like vehicle customization. And I had fun with it. And so I I never really played any of the other ones. And so I'm excited for them to reboot this and bring this back to kind of make this series fresh. So I, I feel like unlike a lot of the Saints Row fans, I am actually optimistic about this because I think this will draw me back in. This is uh, August 23rd, by the way. We're all the way up there because we're running out of official confirmed dates. It's true. And Saints Row also, too, is it's a little bit like just causey in kind of the way true. you can deal death with impunity yeah i think i honestly i think i like this game i just i i tried to play saints row four a couple times and uh, i did did not hit with it's a bit too bit too cartoony arcadey um the next game is jake's uh new favorite game uh because it's hr geiger and it's sexy i feel like this was another one that was announced a long time ago right two years ago it's been a long time because I listened to the Easy Allies podcast and I swear for like three or four years, Scorn was a sponsor of there. So I would hear about Scorn every single week for years. Um, but I feel like it kind of got its big spotlight when it was in one of the uh, the pre Xbox Series X um, yes. press conferences mm-hmm. and you saw some H.R. Giger equine phalluses uh, and stuff coming out of it into a shotgun yes like this, not look, even joking i i will never play this game it looks too scary for me but it honestly looks and sounds and fee- it looks like it will feel really really Juicy. good yeah i yeah. feel like i can only play this game naked and oiled up <laughs> <laughs> so, but like yeah. machine oil not baby yeah oil. oh of course <laughs> yeah. machine oil motor oil um yeah. And finally, of the confirmed release dates for the year of our Lord 2022 on 11.11, the Lord has blessed us with another incredible Bethesda games handed down from God to man. Todd Howard on the mountaintop grabbing (laughs) Starfield and saying, here, this is for you, and handing it to uh the pr guy tom what's Brandon. his name i uh, would tom like Hindle's. to know more. pete hines and pete hines brought unto the people fish and bread and they played starfield into the night and had sex i'm excited for I starfield am, i am clicking on the paul verhovian press release i would like to know more <laughs> this i i'm excited for this because honestly i'm very down on bethesda games because after fallout 4 and then fallout 10 out of 6 10 out of 10 um it feels like they're just really leaning into their formula and not doing things well and just kind of brushing off the complaints that have been there for years and years and years like all the bugs and issues etc um and the the engine that's long in the tooth starfield from what they've shown and talked about so far it looks like they are actually doing something radically different it's still kind of an open world game but it does not look like any of their other games um it looks very good it looks like it's very tangible i think the whole thing is in first person right and it's yeah this i think there was a very brief gameplay gameplay trailer i think it maybe mm-hmm. e3 last year it yeah seemed... and, and they've been doing a lot of dev diaries too and it this this looks like something different and that makes me excited 
Yeah, it seemed very much like if Moon missions kept treatment. going uh, after mm-hmm. after uh, the last one. So that's exciting. Um, I have a proposal, which is for this episode of Local Chat to stop with the confirmed games of 2022 and uh, perhaps hit the the unknowns maybe next week. What do you think? Redfall does never um, release it? Or we just never honestly, hit it? I kind of I kind of want to get back to normal local chat episodes. So I was thinking what a, maybe of pick like a couple of these. Yeah, let's just go around the horn like three times and you just pick one of them. Talk about it. Pick one. Let's do that. I'll oh, I'll kick yeah. it off. Go. I want to talk about. This is a 2022 game. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild sequel. I am very excited for this. I think they have taken enough time that hopefully this is not just Breath of the Wild, but with some other stuff on top and like different asset placements. This feels like they're actually doing something different. I believe based on the images, it is the same map, but based on the amount of time and also them talking about their dev tools and how easy their dev tools were to work and iterate with. I'm expecting this to to act, actually be a sequel and not just be something that feels like, you know, uh, an asset flip. Um, I'm really excited for this. Are you guys excited for the Breath of the Wild sequel? Yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, uh, w- <laughs> Will, you want to go? Yeah. I, I Is Calypso Project not on here? I guess not. What? I thought uh, it was. I don't think it was announced. For a date? Anyways. Okay, so I won't say it. Hogwarts Legacy, I think it'll be really cool to play a full-fledged uh, kind of RPG set in Hogwarts. I it's like it's, It boggles my mind that there ha- hasn't been like an open-world, just-go-to-Hogwarts-type game, type game, and I feel like yeah. this will be the closest we get to that. Um, get into Slytherin and rank up my bullying stats. I, th- yeah. I think some of the PS2 games tried to do that. A little bit, but they, I, I don't all those games have been with Harry Potter in them. Yes. So it's like, I would, make I would love a game where it's like, you show up to Hogwarts. Here's your first year. Here's your second year. Here's your third. Like almost like a, I don't even know. You got held back. Here's your third year. Right yeah. Now. Can you yeah. get held back or yeah. you just execute? Um, Jake, your pick. Your turn, turn into a mud blood. Um, <laughs> uh, just cause we were kind of talking about it before the show. Uh, Lego star Wars, the Skywalker saga is not coming out. It, There's no way. Well, <laughs> I looked it up. It did get announced at E3 2019. Jeez. Um, it's never coming out. It's not going to Just happen. to say, it is currently announced for first half of 2022. No. But they keep pushing it. And I believe the, the latest rumor is that it's late 2022 right now. It, I, don't, I don't think... I think at some point, WB is going to be like, no, we're pulling the plug. It's not coming yeah. out. Yeah. I can um, see that. Oh, sorry. It's you. Yeah, I just want to talk about a double hit. Um, Arkham series has kind of been on the, the the sleeping side for a little while, but there's two coming out: Gotham Knights from WB Games, Montreal, and Suicide Squad: Kill the Justice League from Rocksteady. Um, I'm pretty excited for these. I feel like we haven't really had those Arkham games are really good, but I felt like they came kind of too soon, one after the other, and they kind of wore themselves out. So I'm excited to get back into that kind of, you know, like combo circle bad guy brawler type in an open world. I'm glad they're not just going straight back to Batman and they're kind of trying some of these other DC stories. So these these could be pretty cool. Uh, Arc Raiders from Embark Studios, Patrick Soderland, I believe. Is that the one Celia works at? Friend of the pod? Yes, I believe so. Um, I think it looks really cool. That trailer at the Game Awards was killer with the Robin song in it. Uh, it kind of looks like that generation zero game that came out a few years ago, but uh, made by a much bigger studio over a longer period of time. Uh, yes. I think it looks fun. Uh, I'm excited to fight the apocalypse robots with friends. Jake. I'm super excited about Redfall. I'm a big fan of arcane. Um, and I'm, I'm just very interested to see what is coming out of Arcane Austin next, because um, obviously we got Deathloop out of Arcane Leon, um, but I'm I'm interested in what the Austin branch has been working on because Prey was just Chef's kiss. That was a Chef's kiss for the audio listeners. Mm-hmm. Chef's um, kiss. 
Yeah, it looks interesting. I like. I I I thought I was kind of worn down on zombies and vampires in the past couple of years, but it feels like maybe they're doing something a little fresh with the vampire genre. Yeah, could be cool. And I I trust um, Arcane to at least make a game that plays real good. Please, sir. Uh, yeah, I. Yeah, maybe just maybe 2022 is the year of Kerbal Space Program 2. It's currently announced for the second half of the year. Uh, it was initially an early 2021, but I feel like that was a very optimistic early announcement from them. Um, I'm very excited for this. Kerbal is fantastic and we have a lot of fun with it on this site, but it's definitely wonky and they really need to like fix the physics and add a lot more stuff. And if watching the dev diaries and the, and the gameplay segments they reveal it looks like they are doing that that they decided you know what we got to cut off Kerbal space program one and we really just got to start fresh and build a new and i am ready 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 to sink a whole bunch of hours into Kerbal space program two. yeah totally um and for my final game uh you would think it would be sniper elite five but it's not it is the system shock remake uh or remaster, whatever it is. No, it's a remake. Uh, I like System Shock 2 a heck of a lot. Uh, it is so good. One of the best games ever. Uh, I tried some System Shock 1. I tried some System Shock 1 remake. And it's just not doing it for me. That game's a little too old for my fingers to enjoy. But you know who will enjoy it is all the youngins when Night Dive Studios uh, makes it this year. Good ending. Thanks. Jake, uh, I'm. I would like to see gameplay sometime soon of Denis Villeneuve's Frank Herbert's Dune: Spice Wars. Yes, because I know this... they just released that trailer that was essentially just sand yes. running through a giant hand. But I want to see gameplay from it. I think there. I think there's some gameplay or at least some screenshots. There is so much potential. Dune like basically launched the real time strategy genre back in the day. And Dune, the story, the the uh, the world, there is so much room for an incredible 4X game here. I'm totally. a little worried. I don't I don't know who these people are. I don't know if they're gonna be able to pull it off. But I'm still excited for it. Yeah, I do see some. Um, shout out to Homeworld. Shai Three. Halud. Uh, Praise Shai Halud. Shout out to Homeworld Three, uh, which looks awesome. Oh yeah, also and, yeah. Warhammer Splatoon 40k 3. Dark Tide, Splatoon 3, Six Days in Felucia. <laughs> Sonic <laughs> Frontiers. Sonic Frontiers. <laughs> well, let's get three. Gollum. Uh, anyways, I'm going to start the music. And we're going to get the heck out of here, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in to this little old show. We love doing it. And I can't wait to get back to normal next week. Um, that was 2020, 2022 year in preview uh, for your listening ears. Folks, if you made it this far into the podcast, you know what time it is. It means it's time to message Will on Discord with code word vanilla and he will buy you a copy of Inscription. So make sure you do that because <laughs> that game's incredible. Um, and no one took me up on the last time I did this because nobody listened Heck to that no. podcast. Um, so definitely do that if you can uh, link below on the YouTube channel or in the podcasting app of your choice to join our discord um, Ian Gibson, Jake Terrio thank you so much for joining me on this uh, and chatting, it was lovely I wish we could have gone the pace we did with the first 10 games the entire time yeah, um, we'd be here for 7 hours yeah and we need a bigger audience for that um, folks, you can find me on Twitter at Hunt270. You can find Ian on Twitter at Think Gibson. You can find Jake on Twitter at underscore Jake Terrio. Um, you can find all of our content, subpixelfilms.com, at Subpixel Team on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. The song is wrapping up. The year is not over, it has just begun. Uh, and I'm looking forward to it and spending it with you, gentlemen. Uh, folks, thank you for listening, and we will see you all next week. Bye.